change the face of Cabot Cove, Jessica's on the warpath. Murder, she wrote, in half an hour here on BBC One. even at school. Move on, you know, we're in the big bad world now. Oh, here we go. What's the excuse? Bad back. It's been giving me jip for days. It has. We've got the doctors going to check that. You don't want me beating you to that channel swim as well. Oh, here we go again. Look, if some transvestite from Little Britain can do it, <laughs> what's to stop me? Good morning. Is it? Good night last night. Maybe. I bet you're one of those guys who tries to hide a hangover of last minute shower in the morning. Wet hair. Dead giveaway. Actually, I was up bright and early. I went to the pool. Do you remember that time I took you swimming? You must have been about eight. No, I sense another character assassination. <laughs> Daniel was attempting a dive uh, to impress some favourite uncle. Anyway, he belly flopped and ended up being sick <laughs> on the side of the pool. We were persona non grata after that. Because you scarpered. He didn't offer to clean up. <laughs> Morning. Uh, George, I was wondering if you were free at lunchtime. Oh, sorry. Some other time? A real stubborn streak, that one. OK, so you've got Waterfield Road and Benson Avenue this morning. Don't forget Lanternas. Yes, boss. Quit it, will you? If you take back that dig about swimming the channel. Look, Patrick, it's not going to happen. You've got a kid on the way. All the more reason. You've had your fun, mate. It's time for you to come back down to earth for the rest of us. It's still a little low. I'll get one of the doctors to review your inhalers. Thanks. My asthma's been pretty bad. Must be the stress, I suppose. What's the problem? Oh, time of year for all the big sale competitions. Lots of pressure. Got to be in ship-shape condition. Yeah, I suppose you have. You haven't taken a boat out, have you? Me? Oh, it's the best thing in the world. Nothing like it. Yeah, I guess. Never know where the boat's heading, or where it's going to end up. Well, that's the adventure. Now, adventures, I can do. Yeah, you see some lovely sights. The sea breeze, the sun in my face. Oh, I never know what's coming, and the weather can change in a second. And you might not make it back to safety. Oh, it's all in the lap of the gods. Exactly. Tansley, got an appointment? Which doctor? Not sure. Oh, don't worry. Uh, please take a seat. Problem? Only that computers are the work of the devil. Oh. Well, I need all my doctors to take a look at Gary. Well, it's a little difficult at the moment. I've got no records, no appointments. 
Is it OK for you to wait? Oh, and um, don't forget, I want to see your cantata. She's quite a boat. Beautiful craftsmanship. <laughs> I bet. Now that is the life for me. Mm. You know, actually, I'm quite a good sailor. I didn't know that. Yeah, Mum sent me for lessons on the med. Oh, very nice. I've got a Mrs Anderson and a Mr Tansley waiting. I think they're your next patients. I think. Oh, the computer's crashed. Ah, oh, the twice yearly curse. OK, you better fish out their notes for me. Anyone here to see me? Um, Anderson. Thank you. Tansley. Mrs Anderson. <sighs> Take a seat. So, what can I do for you, Mr Tansley? Oh, well, it's probably nothing, but... I've had this backache for a few days. Bit of numbness in my leg as well. Comes and goes. OK, we can take a look at that. Probably window cleaning items or something. <laughs> Is that what you do? Yep, for my sins. Well, your symptoms could be related to your work. So how are things going generally? Uh, well, I'm tired, but that's usual. You know, it is too much to do, too little time. I'm sure you'll be fine. But we'll do some checks, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> OK. Now you're making me feel nervous. Well, I'm just concerned that it sounds like what happened before. That it could indicate that your MS is relapsing. Oh. Well, don't worry. I'm sure we can keep things on track. So... Well, the numbness seems to have gone. Muscle tone's good. So, uh, these relapses, how often are we talking about? Oh, it's hard to say. You last showed symptoms just before your diagnosis, about a month ago, wasn't it? Well, how bad will it get? Well, it's worth thinking ahead. You saw Dr Woodson a couple of weeks back. What did you discuss about treatment? Oh, uh, general stuff. She gave you some pain relief. How's that working? All right, I suppose. Look, if there's any discomfort, I'm happy to review things. No, no, it's OK. We discussed what treatment options are available to you with Dr Woodson. Physiotherapy, complementary therapy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Did Dr Woodson refer you back to the MS nurse at St Phil's? Uh, uh... Oh, look, it's a lot to take in, I understand. But don't worry. Before you know it, we'll have you fighting fit. And make sure you take the rest of this week off, OK? Joe, I know I'm the new boy here and I shouldn't be making waves. Oh, dear. You've offended Vivian. No, no, I haven't offended anyone yet. <sighs> Go on. Well, I know I don't have the computer records, but just a little bit concerned about the way that George advised a patient to die with MS. Well, she's an excellent GP. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, but something's not right. I mean, the guy's recently diagnosed. He's had some pain relief, but no other follow-up. I mean, he really didn't know the first thing about what was available to him. Ask her. I'm sure there's a simple explanation. <laughs> She'll understand. You're just being thorough. Hmm. Patrick, do you want to come down? In a minute. Nearly done. Come down, just, just, come down. Give us a minute. Now, the Bay of Monaco, that would suit me down to the ground. Nice little yacht, doesn't have to be too flashy. Well, thanks, Dr Granger. Hey, and remember what you said. Let us see that ship of yours sometime. OK. You've got a boat, OK? You can go anywhere you like. Where do you go? Boats make me seasick. I've always wanted to explore the Galapagos. Right. Oh, have you got a second? I'd like to talk to you about a patient. Well, can it wait, cos I'm with a patient? Sure. I saw him last night. 
They seem to be in good spirits, but I don't know. Probably all starting to sink in. How is he going to come to terms with something like that? By accepting it. It's no use in pretending anymore. Couldn't you let me finish? You put me right off. You could have broken a window. Oh, so it was my fault. You know these posh places. Accidents can be very bad for business. Oh, here we go. Put your precious business first. Well, someone has to. I work hard for you. If that's not good enough, I'll see you later. Come on, I didn't mean... Where are you going? Swim. Help me calm down. What, Mum? Oh, yeah, you're a lifesaver. Oh, tough morning. Swells and calms. Excuse me? Oh, I'm just thinking nautically. Oh, you've been speaking to Gareth. What is it with that guy? Well, you know, I think secretly everyone wants to run off to sea. Apart from Vivian, that is. So, what's your fantasy? None of your business. Oh, come on. Master and Commander. Titanic? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. There we are. Elizabeth Swan. Well, only if I had Captain Jack for company. Oh, good, good. I he'd be calling you wench. Set you to work on his galley. Well, it'd be dying a scurvy before he do that. Ah, but what if he hoist you over his mainstay? <laughs> well, then I'd make him walk the plank. Oh, no, the <laughs> keel hole. That'd be the worst punishment any pirate oh, ever had. Stop it. Just stop it. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'd better be getting back. What? Careful. Oh, don't worry, he's no worse than Nick. And anyway, he makes me laugh. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. I, I didn't mean all that stuff I said. I'm training, leave me alone. I know you do a good job. Come on, just stop, will you? Well, it's, it's hard with the computer records being out of action. It's fine. Ask me anything you like. Well, um, apart from pain relief, what other treatment options have you discussed? We've uh, talked at length about physiotherapy and longer-term drug therapies. Any understood? Uh, yes. Well, that's weird, you know, because uh, he struck me as someone who hadn't got to grips with his illness at all. Are you concerned about how I've dealt with the patient? No. No, not at all. I'm just being thorough. Because you don't think I've been? Where do you get off? Questioning my judgement? You've been here five minutes. I'm fine. You're soaked. Yeah, and you look terrible. Thanks, everybody. There's nothing to worry about. It's just crap. Oh, just do it, will you? What is with you today? So it's normal to dive into a pool fully dressed. Look, you scared the hell out of me. I thought you were going to drown or something. I thought it... What? I thought it was your MS. Who told you? Get off me. What is this going to do? I want to see Dr. Granger. I'm afraid the computer's down. I don't care. I want to see him now. Is it an emergency? No. Yes. If it's a genuine emergency, I'll find you the first doctor who's free. <sighs> you can't go through there. Uh, Patrick. Patrick, maybe I can help. Uh, Dr. Granger said that you were concerned about your treatment. He talks to everyone, does he? Well, I have a few moments I can spare. Well, the discussion I want is how to sue this practice. Well, I've managed to calm him down for the moment, but Mr. Tansley has got every right to be angry. We have given out some very sensitive information. If the computers were reliable, we wouldn't have this sorry state of affairs. What happened this morning is down to human error. Mine. I gave Pete Tansley the wrong information. But it was a mistake, however unfortunate. It is up to the doctor to check that he's got the right notes before a consultation. I agree. And if it helps, I'll understand if you want to find another locum. Mr. Tansley hasn't made the complaint official. It's still early days. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? Doctors think they can make all the decisions. 
Maybe it's not such a bad thing. I was going to find out sometime. Yeah, when I chose to tell you. Yeah, I'll take you haven't told Julie. Will you stop all these questions, Pete? All right. I don't need you treating me any different. I just can't get my head around it. It... It is called relapsing remitting MS. It means the messages that my body sends through nerve fibres, they don't work right. That's it. Well, there's got to be more to it than that. Look, I'm not some invalid. I don't need you moping all over me. I know that. Yeah? Because I'm still your big brother. I'm still invincible. Oh, Joe, your nephew, is he always so arrogant? Uh, most of the time, yeah. Well, where does he get off questioning my judgement? I don't think he meant to. Um, Daniel can be a bit hot-headed, leaps in without thinking, but his heart's in the right place. Well, I suppose I did rather jump down his throat. No, it's fine. He understands you've got a lot on your plate. I'm fine. Just a word of advice from someone who's stuck his head in the sand once too often doesn't get you anywhere. I am done sticking my head above the parapet. Look, just try talking things through with Nick. Might not be as bad as you think. What is this? It's an application to the Channel Swimming Association. You're not serious, not now. I want to fight this thing. Even the fittest, most healthy people can't manage it. You see, that's why I didn't want to tell you. I knew you'd want to start treating me like an invalid. What do you want? I'm just snipping out to lunch, or maybe not. Dr Granger took your car. Right, well, it looks like I'm walking then. Anything you fancy while I'm out? I'm not very hungry, thank you. Don't beat yourself up about what happened. I'm not. How can I be expected to work under these circumstances? Bad equipment, no support. Uh, I'm sorry, we're closed for lunch. Michelle! Gareth came in earlier. Oh, yes, I remember the yachtsman. You wanted to see my boat? Oh, I'm on my lunch. I haven't really got time to go to the coast. As you were also keen to see it, I brought her here. Your boat's in there? See? Isn't she a beauty? Small, but perfectly formed. I know the mix-up today has made things really hard. Oh, we agree on something, then. But it's done now. It might not be such a bad thing that Patrick's MS is out in the open. Give you guys a chance to talk. Talking's overrated. When I was younger, I always wanted a, a brother or a sister, you know? Someone older to look up to, someone younger to torment. <laughs> You had a lucky escape there. No, no, seriously. It's a great thing that you have each other. Knowing there's someone there to support... Oh, that's the last thing on his mind. Because you don't listen. It's bad enough he gets to boss me around all day at work. Now he wants to run the rest of my life as well. Because you're too pig-headed to see sense. Look, just tell him, will you? Tell him he hasn't got a hope of doing a swim. What swim? Should have known. Haven't told the doctor, have you? It's my business! Well, why don't you tell me what this is all about? He wants to swim the channel. The English channel. Save it. No, no, look, wait. Need a hand? He was always full of dreams and schemes. While well, the rest of us live in the real world, eh? Mm. It's like with the business. Patrick's always looked down on the job. Calls it a stopgap. Until he finds something better. And he never has. No one in the family sees it. They still think that Patrick's going to do great things. They were always filling his head with it when he was a kid. What about you? I just had to get on with it, do things my way. I did... Of course, I was always the one that Patrick came running to when things went wrong. So what's different now? This is when he really needs you. I just... I just don't think I can do it anymore. I saw how you were this morning. 
You were dealing with the shock of finding out your brother has MS. And you kept it together. Yeah, on the surface. You'll be there for him. Only if he lets me. Right, now I've got something for every mood here. Something intellectual, a uh, bit of music. Oh, and I even got you some boy stuff and some sport. Thanks. So how are you? Model patient, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. I must be losing my touch. Well, you look great. I'm so much better. Right, well, um, make myself useful while I'm here. How do you mean? Well, let's get you out of bed. No, there's, there's no need. The doctor said they want you up and about. No, really, I'm fine. Now, come on, you for some... Get off. Sorry. Talk to Pete. He's just scared. Pete's right. Doing the swim is just a stupid pipe dream. But it meant something. <laughs> My wife's due in the next few weeks. I'm going to be a dad. That's great news. Is it? My kid will grow up with Dad being sick. I don't want that to be the only way that they'll see me. Then do the swim. Make them proud. That having MS means that sometimes symptoms will flare up. There'll be times when you have to take things easy, but there'll be plenty of others when you're in remission. And you'll feel OK. And if we keep a close eye and take sensible precautions... You really think I can do this? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Well, I think I can. What you said to him? You guys train together, right? Yes, sir. Why not both do the swim? No, no. I told you, I don't want any part of this. Look, uh, you see MS as something debilitating. Well, isn't it? Some of the time, yeah. But the rest? There's no reason why he can't live a normal life. Patrick is fit, he's healthy. Okay, if he takes the right advice, he can do the swim. But you don't know that. No. But why not do the swim with him? That way, you can make doubly sure he's safe. Pete? My back is... OK. Oh. <laughs> oh, watch it. It's still sore, you know. <laughs> Those flowers could do some fresh water. They're fine. Sorry, so trouble. Sit. Please. <clears throat> Drinking. Half a glass of wine. No, I should have been paying attention. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> How can you be so calm? Look, if I can learn to live with it, so can you. Besides, you've got a beautiful daughter. <gasps> Husband who loves you. <laughs> I hear congratulations are in order. Oh, I just made the best of a bad situation. You sorted it, and that means a lot. I heard Gareth Hoptruff came back. Ugh, never mention that name in my presence again. Well, it's hardly Gareth's fault that we all got a bit carried away. Exactly. He may not be Ellen MacArthur, but he loves his hobby. And surely it's the passion that counts. It was a toy. Well, size isn't everything, right? brought some magazines. Uh, yeah. How thoughtful. Yeah, George brought in some proper man stuff. Um, I'd better get back to afternoon surgery. Nice to see you again. Um, take care, Nick, and thanks for what you say. Why were you thanking Nick? Um, he, he's been really good. So you feel better? A bit. You don't think Nick's got enough on his plate without you laying your guilt on him as well? What? We didn't come here for his benefit, did you? Oh, that's not fair. Fair. You know, before all this happened, I thought Nick was the one. I thought we could have had a normal life together. Thanks to you, it's gone to hell.
about that mix-up earlier. Hey. Where's the coffee? What? You OK? Absolutely. Miss me? No. Yeah, this shit like crazy. He may never walk again. It wasn't your fault. Try telling that to Nick's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Dr. Granger, who's been a naughty boy then? Next today here on BBC One, Jessica's nephew is conned with deadly consequences in Murder She Wrote. The one to watch tonight.